and I would have no business to have any of hers. So even we that work in these modalities, we get energy checkups from time to time because we're human. Right. And living in 2011 mm -hmm. with a fast moving technology interaction yeah. with a lot of people yeah. who might not be energetically intact, mm -hmm. um, it's a good practice to do. And also if we were living in a tribal setting, we will probably not be exposed to this many people as we are exposed right, to every day, right. the interactions, maybe someone is honking your horn at you when you're driving and you feel that little feeling of shaken up or yeah. something feels taken from you. Yes. You get really annoyed and you feel like, you know, why did he do that? So I think that just us living here and now makes us more vulnerable to soul loss. And in many yeah. traditions all over the world, we do recognize that things that happen to us cannot only be dealt with in our minds. There is mind, body, and spirit, and we need to go through the whole, we need to, to bring the healing to all those three aspects of ourselves to really heal. So this is our is. way of kind of approaching that. Yeah, and sometimes people have soul leakages. I mean, for some folks that have issues with fatigue or energy, or they do a lot of healing work, but they still just can't seem to break particular patterns with substance abuse or unhealthy patterns in relationships or anger management. Sometimes it's as simple as in their energetic field, they're leaking their soul and they need wow. to uh, really have energetic stitching to keep intact. Wow. An example of that could be someone who feel like I have done all the work, mm -hmm. I've done worked with myself for so long, why is it still, why are things still not always something that feels a little off? Yeah. Why is it not falling into place? And that could be a good reason. It could be so lost and you keep on losing your soul, you keep on losing parts of yourself all the time, even if you've done all this work that you think should be just be be like a good foundation for a whole healthy life, yeah. but something feels off. Right. The other technique wow. that Anasara mentioned was depossession, oh, which yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah which, is the, which is the the second to most exciting, only secondary to psychopomp. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Well, yes, yeah, of course. You know the, 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 yeah. It's exciting words. <laughs> yeah, they are exciting words. Yeah. And, and they are. Ex it is exciting work now. Some folks are a little more familiar with depossession um, because, quite frankly, in some religious traditions, um, more in this cultural context, what we would consider more conservative religious traditions. We're interfaith ministers, uh -huh. but in many Christian Catholic, um, church. Catholic, Catholic church, church uh, exorcism, uh -huh. yeah, exorcism right. and depossessions are done. And the belief is, uh, shamanically, is that we can have entities either through people who are living, deceased, or if folks believe in fundamental negativity or evil, mm -hmm. um, that stuff is floating around that can attach to us, hmm. that really isn't ours. So it's not about our own souls being fractured. It's something on us that doesn't belong to us. Mm -hmm. And I have seen uh, huge gains drastic changes in clients' behavior, wow. um, particularly around folks that have mood swings or folks that can be verbally or physically abusive or addiction, that wow. once a depossession is done of something that's attached to them, and sometimes it's not as drastic as all of a sudden they're a changed person, but sometimes it literally is. And it can be very wow. powerful for people to to see that it might not be all theirs. Right. It's not all, I am not the one who is ultimately wrong. It might be uh -huh. something else. And it might be, you know, some people approach their addiction that way, for example, that it's something that is, uh, that is not a part, it's, a, it's a, an illness, a disease. And that's kind of how we could see this, that this is something that is attached to you mm -hmm. that can also be removed. And it is not, you are not wrong, you are not bad, you are not, you are whole. Yes. But something is attached to you and we're going to work with it to remove it. Wow. And e with... E yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is exciting. <laughs> and, and in radical healing, disease in our thought process is dis Ease. Uh -huh. Same mm -hmm. spelling, 
put a hyphen between the S and the E, the first one, um, it is about dis-ease in our mind, body, and spiritual selves, wow. um, which is different than medicating, and we're not anti-medication because some folks need that and mm -hmm. benefit from that, um, but we work in conjunction with other modalities. Um, to jump to the psychopomp, which is, you know, usually people's favorite because it sounds so wild. And it's not pump, right? It's pomp, P-O-M-P? P-O-M-P. It's okay. psycho <laughs> pump. pump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All what? kinds of visual images <laughs> come for that. Um, and what psychopomp is, is connecting with a lost loved one or individual. So someone who has died, has physically left this earthly plane. Mm -hmm. um, shamanically, there's a certain period of time, usually seven to 10 days, that we would wait um, if somebody came and knocked on our door and said, my wife died yesterday, can you make sure she crossed over to heaven? We would say, in our belief system, in our training, this spirit doesn't just leave the body and dart to heaven in five seconds. Um, it takes a while, particularly if someone uh, has not been prepared for death. If someone has died from an overdose or a car accident or a heart attack. Usually folks who have long-term illnesses like cancer or uh, die from AIDS complications uh, over a long period of time, the person, even if they're having a hard time, may have a different level of readiness. Oh, yes. When death yes. happens like this, oftentimes the spirit doesn't get the fact that they're dead. Right. Um, I recently worked with a client uh, who was having her own issues uh, about her brother, who when she was 15 and he was 13, he was struck by a vehicle and killed. Oh. And even though this was several years ago, she's in her early 20s now, uh, we went back shamanically uh, in the journey. I was able to see the traumatic accident, connect with her brother, see the time, even though it was years ago. Uh, it is accessing a parallel universe. No, it sounds a little wacky, but it is the truth, whether it sounds weird or not. <laughs> yes, exactly. um, and we shamanically have the technology to check in to make sure that loved ones have crossed over. And oftentimes, we are able to give a client a piece of information or describe or share something mm -hmm. that we might not otherwise know. Right, right. Um, that's Just for validation. Absolutely. Yes. And that is always important for people. Oh, yeah. um, and for, us. Yeah, and for us too. Yeah. But it's important for people to feel like, oh, all right. Because it's, uh, these things, we know that these things do sound, this is not words we usually use. Or for many people, this is not yeah. the way they usually think about the world and their life. Right. So they usually need something little to be like, okay, yeah. so I'm not just, to know it's real. you know, yeah. 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 yeah, trusting these people with these weird words yeah. and weird techniques. So. But I think I think I mean the words are are new to me, yeah. you know. But I think the um, you know the practice and mm -hmm. I think especially in this era now, mm -hmm. you know, people a lot more aware of mm -hmm. these things. So they are, and the many, old is coming back. Yeah, the old is mm -hmm. coming back, and many people do feel like we said, mentioned before. Many people do feel like I've tried so much. Why am I not whole? That's right. Why am I still suffering? Why am I still not doing okay? And then we can look at how have people been doing think this? How have people healed themselves for thousands and thousands of years uh -huh. all over the world? How come these shamanic techniques are found in uh, the very northern part of Europe? Oh, that's and right. the same part, the same techniques are found in Africa mm -hmm. or Asia. And people have used mm -hmm. the same techniques and there must be something to that. Yeah. So tell us about your facility. Sure. Um, we have a 3,000 square foot building uh, in Bucks County in Warminster. And it is part residential and part commercial. So we do live on site. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a divided facility. Anasara and I both have office space there. And what we refer to as the hub mm -hmm. is a 1,000 square foot uh, event space uh -huh. and I've been there and it's very cool <laughs> <laughs> it is very cool it is, it is very great. cool <laughs> it's worth coming just to look at it yeah 
Um, and we uh, work with clients in that space for the healing modalities. We also have a six foot deep in ground heated uh, salt water healing pool. And in the healing pool, uh, we do not allow any chemicals. It's all salt water, uh, crystals and herbs. And people that we do other modalities with can also uh, work with us and work with themselves in the pool. Um, we have a sauna, a sauna steam capsule, nice. and people can do sauna work uh, before and after our nice. other modalities. Because we are ministers, we do baby baptisms and blessings in the pool. Love it. Uh, Love we do it. weddings at, as long as your max is not more than 30 people, if you have, need a s private ceremony. Uh, we perform weddings, memorial services, and the space is available for rental, for people to have birthday parties um, or other events. We also do personal, group, couple uh, retreats, healing retreats, uh -huh. spiritual retreats, etc. that we offer events. We usually have one event a month that we um, offer at the center and we can also personalize a uh, retreat for you uh, <laughs> or someone you love. Yeah. And we also wow. think it is important we also bring in people who do exciting stuff and who are just like us on the path of finding a way to healing healing people yeah. and healing the world. So we welcome those people to come and do stuff at our place and just you know, just share, and we are, you know, we would just try to invite people and wow. just create workshops and create so if opportunities. Any, so if anybody's up out there that is a healer or, mm, you know, into that kind yeah. of thing, absolutely, you, yeah. they can get a hold of you guys too. Absolutely, yeah. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. Huh. <laughs> so um, when is your next event? Uh, our next event right now is in September. Okay. Uh, the fellowship that we are ordained with, which is Ecumenicon Fellowship, uh, that's probably not flashing on the screen, but <laughs> that's www.ecumenicon.org, and we are having a uh, member and new member retreat. We'll have workshops. We'll share business about being in beloved interfaith community with each other. We'll have uh, organic vegetarian food. Nice. We'll have time in the saltwater pool. We'll have nice. uh, time outside in our gardens by the fire pit. And, um, fire pit. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's coming up. Uh, I also, in my therapy practice, am starting up some group therapies. One is a social skills and swim for teenagers who have difficulty relating to their peers and uh, need assistance with that. So we're doing group work and then we're practicing social skills in the pool. Wow, nice. Um, yeah, so, so uh, anybody that's within the local area, um, we're recruiting folks for that right now. Great. And we also uh, do group shamanistic journey work with other folks on a monthly basis. So nice. that's an ongoing activity and Anasara has group yoga classes and on an ongoing basis at, at the center as well. Wow. So we have about a minute left and okay. this is living it up, making life <laughs> juicy and we certainly are today. Wow. Yes. I love it. And this is Anna Sarah Fire and Rick Fire. And um, so tell me more about um, the other things that you do with the shamanism. You did the psycho pomp, P-O-M-P. Yes. And the, the extractions, extractions, soul retrievals. One minute left. And energy work and all kinds of radical healing. So yes. call us. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that is so exciting. Thank you so much, Ingrid, for taking the time to oh, absolutely. let us come and talk about this. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. My pleasure. <laughs> what, are the, what do you say after the yoga class? Namaste. 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 Yeah. Namaste. Right. Yeah, I bow to the divine wait, in do that. you and myself. Nam yeah. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.